it's a completely botched election uh, even the rigging has not been done properly the biggest surprise in the general elections of 2024 was the astounding performance of uh, Imran Khan's party. Imran Khan, for the right or the wrong reasons, remains the tallest political uh, figure in Pakistan today. Asim Munir, uh, who is the army chief, has lost the election, as has Nawaz Sharif. Two biggest losers, which are uh, Asim Munir and Nawaz Sharif. It's been a big blow to the PMLN because for them, the kind of losses they have incurred in Punjab, they will find it difficult to live that down. Let's make no bones about it. It is the army which is going to be running this government. Three weeks after the Pakistan elections were held on 8th of February, uh, it's quite remarkable that uh, the results are still not completely in. We know largely what the composition of the new National Assembly is going to be, but there are many results which are still hanging fire. Recounting is happening on seats. Uh, and it's a completely botched election. Uh, even the rigging has not been done properly. And it's created a big uproar. And this election, which was supposed to settle everything in Pakistan, uh, has probably pushed uh, Pakistan closer to the abyss uh, than, than anybody imagined it to be. Uh, of course, the biggest surprise in the general elections of 2024 was the astounding performance of uh, Imran Khan's party, uh, the PTI, uh, which fought uh, with its back to the wall. Uh, it had been pressured like never before. Uh, the party's candidates fought as independents, uh, but the fact that they managed to get the voter out and in the kind of numbers that really nobody had imagined. At best, people were giving them 30, 40 seats, and even that uh, would have been a bit of a miracle. But the fact that they've got over 90 seats uh, under the most adverse circumstances is, is a remarkable achievement. Uh, and that clearly proves that Imran Khan, for the right or the wrong reasons, remains the tallest political uh, figure in Pakistan today. Uh, he has won the election. Asim Munir, uh, who is the army chief, has lost the election, as has Nawaz Sharif, whose party just got about 70-75 seats, uh, and then managed to cobble together uh, a few more numbers uh, by, uh, by getting some of the independents onto their side. Uh, and even then have just about reached 80, 82 seats. Uh, and clearly, they uh, are going to find it difficult uh, leading the next government. Now, uh, you don't have to like Imran Khan, uh, but you have to admire the grit and the gumption of the man and of his party uh, to, to fight this election uh, with both hands tied behind their backs. Uh, and of course, uh, even their feet tied and still winning the race. So, uh, so yes, I think uh, they managed to surprise everybody. What has happened is that apart from the two biggest losers, which are uh, Asim Munir and Nawaz Sharif, who was seen as a sure uh, candidate for becoming the Prime Minister for the fourth time. Uh, and I think that ambition of his uh, has, has gone to ground. Uh, and his brother is likely to now become the Prime Minister. But apart from uh, Asim Munir and Nawaz Sharif, uh, the other big losers are uh, Jahangir Tareen, the, uh, uh, the, the, the sugar magnate uh, who had set up this party, Istikam Pakistan Party, which has been virtually wiped out. Uh, another uh, person who has been wiped out is Parvez Khatak, a former Defence Minister, former Chief Minister of uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, uh, an old school buddy of uh, Imran Khan, who had then fallen out with him. Uh, his party has got wiped out. Uh, Maulana Fazlur Rahman's party has got wiped out, and the Maulana is screaming rigging. Uh, but if rigging happened in KP, where Imran Khan has swept the polls, uh, and the Maulana is tying up with Imran Khan and screaming about rigging, uh, then that's, uh, you know, that's a kind of an equation which only the Maulana can solve because it, 
it it doesn't conform to any logic whatsoever but he's been a big loser and of course uh, the other big loser has been the awami national party which uh, which is an inheritor of khan abdul ghaffar khan the frontier gandhi's legacy political legacy uh, they've been virtually wiped out so i think these have been the big losers but i think uh, it's also important to understand uh, what a big setback this election has been uh, for uh, nawaz sharif's muslim league because although they are likely to form the next government in a coalition uh, or should we call it a shotgun marriage uh, between them and the pakistan people's party uh, with the mqm uh, being thrown in which won about 18 seats none of which uh, they had expected themselves uh, mqm was probably going to get about 6 to 8 seats at best uh, with all the uh, circumstances in their favor uh, but i think uh, as as the pakistanis say some extra masala was put on the vote counting day uh, or or while the votes uh, or the while the results were being announced some extra masala was put in and uh, suddenly in the mqm uh, came um, won something like 18 to 19 seats which i don't think even they expected uh, but there's this going to be this this uh, difficult cohabitation between these three parties uh, to form the next government but i think in political terms it's been a big blow to the pmln uh, because uh, for them uh, the kind of losses they have incurred in punjab uh, they will find it difficult to live that down uh, and clearly their political future uh, is now at stake uh, in fact many people uh, have even gone to the extent of saying that this is probably the last time the pmln is going to win an election Uh, because uh, forming the government is the easier part running this government will be extremely extremely difficult for them uh, it will be very difficult because they uh, will be wearing a crown of thorns uh, they will have to take uh, some really tough decisions on the economy on security issues on political matters uh, which is going to uh, make them extremely unpopular uh, even more than what they currently are Uh, and uh, basically uh, i think the political future uh, is is likely to be history uh, and 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 the problem for them is going to be that while at one level they will have to contend with all these difficult decisions they'll have to take in government they will have to also uh, keep and pay uh, a very strong and a very tough opposition which will be mounted by imran khan's party now of course the jury is out on how tough the opposition is going to be a lot of people had expected a very tough opposition after the 2018 elections which were incidentally rigged in favor of imran khan although not rigged as badly as these elections have been rigged uh, but nevertheless imran khan was given a bump up to be able to form the government uh, but the opposition back then was very very strong uh, and yet that oh, that that opposition uh, was a virtual non entity uh, when it came to actually opposing the government uh, it, it it was uh, you know they literally given uh, a walk over to the government of the day uh, something will something similar happen this time around uh, unlikely because uh, i think uh, the the pakistan tehreek e insaf uh, and imran khan storm troopers Uh, are very charged very passionate uh, and uh, have a history of taking on their opponents uh, head on so i would imagine that the opposition that the new government is going to be, uh, be facing is going to be very very stiff and then of course this government will have to uh, somehow try and manage their politics because all the decisions that they will be forced to take will be decisions that will be dictated to them which will be forced down their throat by the army uh let's make no bones about it it is the army which is going to be running this government uh, at best shabash sharif is what atal bihari vajpayee at one time had been called a mukhota uh 
at best shabash sharif is a mukhota he is the mask uh, uh, he is the face but he doesn't have the power the real power will be controlled by the ghq and some of the other institutional mechanisms that they've set up uh, the sifc for example which is which is like the supra uh, uh, finance ministry uh, in in pakistan now these are the guys who are going to take all those tough decisions uh, these will be implemented by the government of the day which will take the flak for all these decisions so they will take the responsibility uh, for all these decisions uh, without having taken these decisions and the army uh, will in a sense insulate itself from the fallout of those decisions at least that's that's what the army expects um, is is likely to happen so i think it's it's going to be a uh, very very tough going uh for for the next government uh and uh, the problem for them is going to be that uh even the army is now on the defensive the army knows that they've stolen a verdict they've stolen the mandate of the people they have brazened it out uh by by cobbling together uh, this this strange uh, kind of a coalition uh the shotgun marriage as i've called it uh between these parties uh each of those parties will try and maximize their own uh, benefit try and uh, try and grab whatever they can from this arrangement so the pakistan people's party is making uh, making a claim for the presidency they are making a claim for a couple of other constitutional posts uh, and a couple of uh, other positions like governorships the chief minister of balochistan uh, the mqm wants its own pound of flesh Uh, so basically the pmln will be uh, left holding the can uh, the ppp uh, is also saying that it's not ready to join the government just yet maybe they'll join it at a later date so maybe they want that uh, shabash sharif uh, and his uh, party take all the difficult decisions in the first couple of uh, months after which uh, you know they can take all the flack and then the people's party will join in and claim that they had nothing to do with all those difficult decisions that were being taken uh, at a time when the pakistan economy is already on the ropes economic distress levels are alarmingly high uh, people's patience with what is happening in the country is at breaking point uh, so i don't think anybody really wants to take the rap for it but uh, the fall guys are of course going to be pmln there are some people of course who think that Uh, because the army is on the defensive because the army knows that it's deeply unpopular uh, because the army uh, knows that there are certain limits beyond which it cannot go uh, this is also the correct time to actually uh, change the dynamics of civil military relations now uh, that sounds good in theory uh, but when you put this uh, theory in practice it uh, requires that Imran Khan, Nawaz Sharif, Asif Ali Zardari, all of them come on to the same page uh, to take on the army, uh, to push the army back into the barracks, to stop the army's interference in in uh, the policy making uh, of the government, uh, and 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 limit the army only uh, to its own domain. That also under civilian supervision. Now it sounds good. but will they be able to come together unlikely because there's just too many ego hassles between all these top leaders there's a lot of bad blood between them there's a lot of competition between them and there is that incentive for leading the other guy up the garden path to cut their own side deals uh, with the army and break that unity so in a sense it's it's a bit of a, a three player or, or a six player if you will uh, prisoners dilemma kind of a situation which makes the game a little more complex but i think at the end of the day uh, each one will try and maximize their own benefit to the detriment of the larger aim of uh, bringing in civilian supremacy in pakistan so that golden opportunity which uh, inadvertently has been given by imran khan to pakistan's politics is likely to be blown uh, this time also Uh, and the army will try and uh, retain its primacy in the affairs of the state uh, but i don't think this is something that can continue for very long 
because given the kind of problems Pakistan faces, unless a miracle happens, things are reaching breaking point. How the cookie crumbles? Watch out for this space.